So, well, we started this whole thing because we we usually have a one week, uh, one day, one once a week call. And uh, during this once a week call, we usually discuss what's going on with our lives and who's working on what and whether they're busy, tired, happy and or whichever. And so we thought, I mean, we always discussing things which are common to the industry. And I and I also teach animation and CG in general. So we thought maybe we can just go live. And in, in the worst case scenario, we are having a call with, our, with ourselves on YouTube live. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it Twitch. doesn't change much. It's <laughs> a sort of group therapy, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. A weekly group therapy, yes. <laughs> And, uh, but I think it's a good idea to introduce, I mean, I know you guys and you know me, but it's a good idea to introduce, to introduce you anyway. So here we have uh, Daniel Dury, who is a principal animator. Is that? Uh, is yes, that a a gameplay animator. Um, please, yeah. gameplay, not <laughs> just specify, animator. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> where, where, where are you working right now? Uh, at uh, at uh, CD Proje Project Red. So CD Project we finished Red. Cyberpunk like a so, couple of months so, ago. So and, you're uh, still finishing Cyberpunk. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, let's say it's fixing the last things. Okay. Nice. And, and Max Bottega, who is here. So I'm working, I'm also working on Cyberpunk, but not directly on CD Projekt. I'm working for um, an outsourcing studio called Treehouse Ninjas here in Budapest. Um, and yeah, we, we, we are uh, in charge of some locations in the city, and we're also still working on Cyberpunk. It's pretty cool. And that's it. And that's it. And that's pretty much it. Yes. That's pretty much it. Me, um, you know me, I'm Beretta. I have Animation Pandemic, the YouTube channel, and well, that's that's about it. So, about we we've met me, Daniele, and Max. We've met about ten years ago, um, on on this. Was it more? Uh, much, much more. I mean, I uh, think it was about 20 this, years this ago. Movie, <laughs> <this movie laughs> All was right, you say 20, 20 years ago. Sorry. <laughs> I think we, we worked on this 2003, 2004, something like that. Yeah. So, so uh, it, it's nearly 20 years. Yeah. So Amedeo is so old that he's already senile. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <You> see? <laughs> this is, this, I, yeah. I lost the I lost the sense of time. It's it was. <laughs> And so, that's why we have these calls to reconstruct memories yes, from our to past. You to remember when we did <laughs> when we did that movie. So uh, this movie, Leo the Lion, was made. It was it was my first job in animation. Actually, it was the first time I had a job in animation. I did some three D before that, but it, it was really the first time I ended up in a in a company doing animation. And um, I, I was twenty twenty one, I think. Now don't. Don't rely on my maths because, as I de as Max demonstrated, my senility is already. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, who are you guys? <laughs> and um, I was super excited when I started on Leo, and I was really worried because uh, I I read on a forum on on an Italian forum about about CG. Do you remember Render Globals? Of course, the globals. That's probably a, a sale. Yeah. <laughs> I, would, I, wouldn't open, sale. I, I wouldn't open it like this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I it would be a little bit of Filipino porn right there. It looks like <laughs> it looks like this. It is no longer, but it used yeah. to be a forum like CG Talk, and it was for it the. It is also no longer. It yeah. is, which is also <laughs> no longer exactly. So. And I remember, I there was the company was advertising. Um, was I advertising for animators and I, I sent out, I made a, a boxy man running and walking and then I sent it out. Oh my and God. The next, yeah, the next, <laughs> the next morning I was going to uni because in the meantime I was trying to do uni and I was in Milan and I received a phone call and I go into the courtyard of a house and he's the owner of the company of Digitrace. And he said, can you come tomorrow? And I was, I was, <laughs> I was like, well, Milan is about 500 kilometers away from Rome. I think <laughs> tomorrow is a bit early, <laughs> but give me but a week. But at least all, all roads bring to Rome. So it's actually yeah, easy so. to get there, right? <laughs> actually, it was, yeah, it was really easy to straightforward, I would say, to find the destination. And, and I got to Rome and uh, I did my my I think it was a two, three weeks test. 
they uh, like you, was, mean, you mean probation or, probation or, yeah it was yeah, a probation okay, okay. yeah yeah Actually, and I, I, I think I received your reel now, but I, I don't remember it all because, I mean, at the time I, I was uh, supervising this thing. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and so most, most likely, I think I got this reel and I say, yeah, all right, get him on board, you know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. I, 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 don't rem <laughs> I don't remember your reel at all. Yes. Yeah. No, of course, I may be able to dig it out before the end of that the would, That would be fucking nice. I, yes. I, I don't know if it's like we can like uh, um, really stomach, 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 stomach it. Yeah. yeah, 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 because I'm already having like this post-traumatic stress disorder <laughs> PTSD. Flashes from, from PTSD flashes from the... Look at the, that. The, the yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is it enough inside the call so I can say fuck? Yes. Or, or... <laughs> no, 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 I think <laughs> I think it's wrong. inside enough. YouTube starts start, stops looking after profanities after about thirty seconds, it seems. So <laughs> so far, okay. so good. So uh, this is called a deep pro profanity at this point. Yeah. Okay. So, but in, in practice, I remember I was super worried because I didn't know anything about the animation uh, the animation business. I didn't know anything at all. And um, I thought, I was very worried. I was thinking, I'm going down to Rome where the pros are working. <laughs> and, and I'm going to, but I just, I'm, I'm just someone who started. So what will I know? And I went there on the first day. I was, first of all, I was very worried because I thought, these guys, they know it all. I don't know anything. That was my mindset. Secondarily, I took one of those night trains from Milan to Rome, which were the cheapest because I didn't have any money. And it took me eight hours in a compartment where the windows would progress the window would progressively progressively slide open during the night because of the vibrations. It was still cold. Cold. I think it was about March. And so in the it's morning, considering the perspective of the, piece, the train that brings the Mexican immigrants to the states, you know, it's yeah. a, the Italian version of it. Yeah, we, we all know that train. Yeah, yeah. at night yeah. you you couldn't even sleep because there would be people shouting, people stealing, pickpocketers. It was a very active train. And uh, I, I, I stayed awake for the whole night. It was also the first time in my life I had to do such a trip. So I was super worried. I mean, I was imagining pe people mob, uh, mobbing me. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Mugging, mugging me. Yeah. Or uh, raped soon... on the train. Or something. I, yeah, sorry. Yeah. I, have, I have to open, I have to open a, a small commentary here because once <laughs> I was riding on that train and I was in the same uh, um, cabin, not cabin, like the, the same, yeah, the, the, the train uh, room with two, no, three uh, nuns coming from somewhere like Poland. And when we woke up in the morning, they stole all the money from like, they, <laughs> ah, they, they, yeah. they, yeah, they did. We didn't notice and they got all the money out of the nuns. So like it, that was oh, a train, no. like in the far West, they steal money from the nuns. <laughs> so that's, that's the, those were the condition in which we traveled I, to go to work. Uh, yeah, I remember I had the same. I, at a certain point I woke up because there were people opening the door very and quickly and checking yeah, and, then this, checking this and then closing. Yeah, they, they check each other. I, <laughs> I woke up, I was like, wait a second. And I went out and I saw that there were two dudes at the end and the beginning of the wagon mm -hmm. and one in the middle opening all the doors. So I knew there was something up on that train. And after way through the night, a couple of guys, young, young people, they started looking for their stuff and in another compartment. And they were like, I don't know, I thought my wallet was here. I can't find it anymore. And so I, I went to them and I said, oh, maybe I know what happened. And I wanted to go to the head of the train. There's a guy who is in charge of the train, but the door was locked to him. So instead, I went to the, to the young guys who were, um, who were, uh, whose wallet was t taken. And then I, with them, I walked to the dudes who were checking the doors. And I, I told the guys, look, those dudes may know about your wallet. And the dudes were, were saying, oh, we don't know anything about the wallet. But after That's five when minutes, you reach for your cold 45. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I wish I had one, maybe. But after about five minutes, they suddenly found that wallet in the toilet. It, it was the same dude. Okay. <laughs> it came the up. Crazy case but, of escaping wallet yeah, that yeah. In, in the trains in Italy. Yeah, right. But at any rate, I got to the company that I couldn't hear anymore from one year because I took that <laughs> I, much cold. So I, I didn't remember know that. Any of this. So but Pandolfi, I remember there was Pandolfi, the, <laughs> the big animator at Digitrace, who was a, a very nice guy. And Pandolfi, he told me a few weeks after that event that he thought I was stupid 
because <laughs> when when I was introduced to the company, I couldn't hear a thing. I was really really worried. So I, they just and I, they set me in front of a software which I never used, which was yeah, Lightwave three D. Right? Because we used Lightwave back then, right? So we used to people use. People don't even know what it is. This now. No, they, I mean you. Well, this is the reason why I got the job. When when I yes. get to tell my story, this is the reason why. And like, let's shout uh, uh, hello to a good Pandolf if he's around. If <laughs> yeah, exactly. In any way, can reach this like the, <laughs> the gentle giant Pandolf. <laughs> yes, and I remember I, I studied Maya. My first day, I, I I got a scene, Lightwave, and Lightwave had one undo. And and was three, like, yeah, the, anim <laughs> the animation, no, actually, the modeling part had more undoes, but the animation, <laughs> had, um, it was called layout even at what? the time, not animation yeah. model. Yeah, yeah, but I approved that. That, one forges, undo. that and, forges and your I'm sorry, I'm sorry, yes, this is where the real men are forged. Or, or yeah, yeah, okay? real yeah. animators because are born here. Because this is, <laughs> this is how you fucking learn, like one undo, <laughs> that, that's, you know. When you play Ghosts and Goblins, did you have an infinite yes. amount of, of coins? No, you got no. three lives. That's why I still remember it instantly. Three. And that's it. It was the, the Dark Souls of... Uh, of uh... <laughs> <laughs> you undoed. I think right now Lightwave is essentially used only in Japan, I suspect. <laughs> yes, I think so. Is it I, I'm, actually, I'm surprised that you, you opened the website and there is still something. It's still there. Yeah, but it's not, so... a, it's, not, it's not a case that it's used in Japan. It's people with resolve, like discipline, and they don't look back. So when, <laughs> yeah. like, they, they will look always... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably when they will dismiss the software, like they will find like 40 people that they got themselves in a temple and say, no more, <laughs> we will not... <laughs> comply with the progress and if light is no more we are not okay. in there yeah and um, um that was my so, so uh, wait a minute i have a question so you actually had the pc your first day which is already a lot honestly yeah yeah i was given a computer uh, okay, I, okay which is so, amazing i mean i've worked in companies in and in, in the uk in the uk yeah. where i didn't even have a table on my first day so <laughs> <laughs> I know it's not completely uncommon. You go to a company and it's like, so where's my PC? Ah, we have to set it up. It's going to be a few days. So yeah. what, what am I going to do? In we are going to order it today. <laughs> like, wait a sec. So you see, we were so professional. We already had. Uh, it was, uh, I mean, that, as a first, as a first site, it was a fairly professional environment. Yeah. Yeah. It was only after a few days that I realized that you people were just as lost as I was. I mean, in a way, everybody, everybody was learning. And, and I mean, yeah. lost in a positive way. We, it was just people who were learning. We have to remember that at the time there was, I mean, the internet was very little. Was, was, I mean, of course there was internet, but it was very bare and you couldn't find many resources at all. You had to go in forums, the ones we said that now they're closed forever. But, <laughs> they don't exist anymore. But uh, I, I, I clearly remember, like I started a few years before this experience of yours. And um, when I look for 3D knowledge in Italy, I found a forum and I remember it was five of us on it, like five people using this forum. <laughs> talking about uh, 3D Max and, and Lightwave. And this is all we had uh, back then. Of course, there probably was uh, some English, uh, American especially, forum, but, you know, it was hard to find. It's not that you just, you couldn't Google shit like this. And uh, so this was all, all I had. Well, and Was and there was, Google? <laughs> Uh, we still I like think... to thank porn for our job because if yes. porn wasn't there with like the, the other like the, the, the other kind of information. I mean, when, when when I when I was searching stuff, I was using Alta Vista. So oh, just, I was yeah. using Alta Vista. <laughs> and made, made the reason why I was on on Lightweb is because that's what I found on a right. Twilight, on, yes. on, on a Twilight CD. So yeah, Maya wasn't yeah. there to the studio. I couldn't like I found Lightweb there. And that's how I started. So I think yeah. you have to explain what the Twilight CD is, Max. Because... Yeah, it's it's. I would say it's <laughs> Warrets, but even that wouldn't explain much at this point in, in history. So... First of all, first of all, it it's recorded on this thing because mm. not everybody may use yeah. this stuff anymore. Even I uh, didn't have a CD drive in the ten years now. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. It's a long time. I don't have them. And then it was. Uh, Twilight was a CD-ROM that used to contain ripped games and software. It was very common in Italy. I don't remember how much you paid for one. And it's a kind of piracy that is still ongoing in some countries of East Europe. 
uh, you, I mean, if you go, I think, to Kazakhstan, you may find that they sell on the streets some DVDs with maybe 10, 15 I'm not sure that counts them. as a history of God, but okay. <laughs> well, I think it's, I don't know, well, it's just a bit east of Europe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, more, more like that. <laughs> but yes, go on, Max. <laughs> with my tail? Oh, well, yeah, with your tail. I don't remember, Daniele, what was Daniele's point? Because um, you no, started about, earlier than I was. Uh, yeah, about being a bit organized and at at, at uh, the company and uh, and having your. Ah, yeah. yeah. It was. It... I think. I think honestly, I. I overall, I have to say, I have a kind of a positive memory about work organization, in general, because uh, especially when you came in at that point, we we had all the previews of the movie done. So the, the the movie existed. Oh, that was your reel. That's that was oh my sorry God. to interrupt. This was my walk cycle. I made it in a night, both the walk cycle and the run. <laughs> that was it. And at the time it was just enough to get in. You didn't really have to this, do that. Was it. I mean this, this that was, was it. very advanced. Like this, I mean like, at you least it stands, immediately the test, this. it stands the test of time. If I show my renders from twenty years ago, you will start puking probably. So, <laughs> so, so it's, the, my... it's, the, it's the advantage of being an animator. That's why you can still watch Disney movies from the 20s. Right. Like my, my very first job was, was a, as a 3D generalist, and it was at a um, sort of multimedia company. They were doing websites, actually, and then, but they needed like 3D mascots for these websites. And so I just went there. Like, I got hired because I could model in 3D. I didn't know anything about animation or rigging or anything else. So, And, and my, my portfolio was modeled like... 3D models of girls, literally that. <laughs> like what a basic nerd does. <laughs> yeah, the, the first thing, right? Like hmm, I'm gonna model the girls in 3D, and that that got me the job. That was it. Yeah. I'm spamming the the link to get. I, I got in getting requests. Uh, all done. Right, right. Boom. Yeah. So yeah, say, and, and this, this, this do you show? Yeah, Medeo, do you show this animation to your students now? Yeah, every now and then I show that. I, I also, yeah, because I mean, I'm I'm trying to under, to make them understand that at the time you could actually get in with relatively little, uh, but but nowadays the bar is much higher. It's also true that at the time there was no knowledge really online, and uh, I, I barely yeah, had yeah, the yeah, internet. There, there was a, so there was also this I'm piece. This was a <laughs> look wow. at that, and I I made. I made these tests because there was a, a bunch of people near Milan who wanted to make a short movie and they told me we need a crow and we need it to mute into a real person. That was, and I asked, sure. uh, and they said, it's for free, they also said. So I started modeling a crow and rigging it and then I, I, I sent them this and I said, I, can, I, said, I can make it. <laughs> I can make it fly. I can make. It. <laughs> of course, I had to cut the landing because I didn't know how to really rig stuff, and the sure. wings started going into gimbal lock of death, and I didn't know how to repair that. So yeah, they would just yeah, <laughs> and that was it. But I managed to make a, a decent lighting that looked like global illumination at the time. Global illumination wasn't there. Remember, it was a bunch of directionals on a dome. True, true. Sp it was just of... a paper from 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 Seagraph probably. Back then, yeah, it was just on a, a, on a papier. But by the way, I don't know if you guys remember F prime. Of course, we oh my do. God, of course. Of I don't course. know if it exactly. Yeah, Does to be it... honest, back then Lightwave had this this. It, 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 was, it was good. The... Okay, honestly, yeah. it was good. It was it really cool. Uh, it was it all mean... the shit software. Yeah. And, and today, other pro programs waited at least ten years to get a proper real time visualization. Mm -hmm. I wish insane. I could show something here. But F prime was the equivalent of the Arnold IPR, in, and it was we are talking about twenty years ago, and it was on Lightwave. And and our computers, we were discussing this with Daniele. How many megabytes of RAM did they have? <laughs> I, I think no, no more than five hundred twelve, but more likely two hundred fifty six. Uh, I think I think if know? we if we had. Yeah. If you have to talking megabytes, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. So course. it was like, and yeah, I, I honestly don't know. We were, you know, doing animation on one monitor, of course, CRT monitor with the damn big curve. Yeah, do you um, remember the, the, the um, render farm room? Oh my god, yes, 
<laughs> so the render farm, uh, so I, I'm saying this with the uttermost respect. For respect, that respect, created man. it. Yeah, yeah, total absolutely. respect, yes. Absolutely. So every anything that we say here, I think I can I can uh, uh, share it with, with like, I'm sure that we all share the same uttermost respect for uh, Francesco Mastrofini, that, that, that's the man that uh, brought up the, the Digitrace, the, the whole company, company, that we were, yeah. Yeah, whole company and anybody that worked, nearly anybody yeah. that worked there <laughs> because of the, 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 the achievements and the degree of, of uh, um, I mean, they, they um, we, we all did our best with what was provided to us, definitely. And in Italy, yeah. there was freaking nothing like that. And the, the render farm was basically a closet with uh, two, one or two air conditioning in there. But yeah, I'm, okay, yeah. I'm saying like it was probably three meter by one or two meter by one. Yeah, like it was that. a small, it's like a closet room or something. Yeah, a closet room like one well, with those metal uh, racks from that you can buy from those do it yeah, yourself. The, 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 cheap, the cheapest <laughs> metal racks, yeah, yeah. Yeah, motherboards <laughs> laying on uh, pieces of woods, like like just like <laughs> one on, stuck it on top of the other, and like an insane heat during the summer, and yeah, and and I, cable I, I, flying. I, think I, I remember one, one a few times one of the air conditioners like failed or something, and the water was pouring down on the motherboards. <laughs> oh yes, because the yeah. because the bucket there was a bucket that yeah, collected. Was a bucket the, and I think somebody and forgot forgot. To empty somebody the, had the, somebody the, had to go the, to the company on weekends to to. Uh, to remove the water, right? It's, cool. it's so, the render bucket that today yeah, is exactly. cleaning, but <laughs> back then it was an actual bucket. <laughs> Fully automated today, it used to be an actual bucket. Yes. Now you know. <laughs> wow. But I mean, you, you, have to, you have to imagine that these guys, they started with, and it's the second CGI movie in Italy, this one, the, the Leo the Lion. And these guys, they started, I think they were, how many people at the beginning? Five? Well, okay, so I, I was mm, with this company, not from the beginning of the company, because before they were doing other things or like sort of a bit of everything. And then this uh, Mastrofini, the, the owner of the company, at some point got this big commission, I don't know exactly how, but to do the first movie, which is not this Leo the Lion, but is another one with the with the b character oh yes. yes it was la petta giulia la signora yeah, yeah, yeah. vita let's yeah, go there one. for a second and, and and so, so when life. imagine it, when we got uh, when I, I got hired for this movie for this la petta giulia here and when i joined the company i think overall we were like seven maybe ah, something like in this range it was really not like and then from seven i think we reached tops 15 people so imagine, I don't even remember the duration of this, but I would say at least one hour of the, the, this thing here. Yeah, I mean, and, you, um, you have to give credit to them. Like each of us produced, I don't know, like 10 minutes of animation. <laughs> Not even, I mean, animation, now we call it animation, but let's yeah. say thing, things that move, okay? Yeah, things that move. Um, it, it, it's true though that I think it's, it's worth making a point that while the company made the CG, the story was devised elsewhere. So the, the I, whole, I, I, yeah, it wasn't, I mean, because when you watch, I mean, when you watch those videos, uh, when you watch the movie itself and you watch those videos talking about the worst <laughs> movie on Netflix, I mean, they're probably right. It, it's one of the worst movies you can probably it, find. I'm, on, I'm on pretty Netflix. sure it is. And I'm, uh, <laughs> but I'm, I'm to... happy to have that badge. <laughs> 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 it's yeah. a good badge to have, but it's also true that the company couldn't really decide the story. I mean, as animators, we were, I mean, the story came from outside. And I think there was also some tentative from the company to change some yeah, stuff. Yeah, to, to, to make something a little bit more appealing, probably. Yeah. And not, not as, because it was, a, I don't know, I mean, the story was whatever it was, meaning it was clearly not to you know professionally written or with something it was something a bit weird and different than the usual story you would expect from something like this i would say um, so we had to work with whatever we had and actually i think when we did the 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 whole previews of the movie actually I remember me and another guy did the whole previews of, <laughs> of this <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, like, it was uh, made by two people. It was, uh, like yeah, yeah, it was uh, like may maybe three of us tops probably. Okay, so we did the whole previous uh, di of this in 3D. Don't show the tails. Don't show the tails. Oh shit! Really... <laughs> oh, no, oh, notice God. how the tails were nightmares on how they were rigged. There was a yeah, storm yeah. with physics. God, okay. yeah, yeah they, crazy, they were yeah. actually so... glued. You can see that. Let me let me zoom in on. No, the... don't. It looks no. Like... <laughs> no, 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 no. It looks like he's, he's, he's ejecting some tapeworm. It's it's no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because it wasn't single mesh. It was like uh, yeah, it was. It was not a single mesh. It was, thing. It was uh, like, a skinned uh, mesh, and then a mesh that was simulated by a single FX artist. I think. I think there was one FX artist. Yeah, yeah well, it, I, as we had one lightning artist, or, or like we, we pretty much we had one of uh, everything, <laughs> except <laughs> except the animators. I think the animators team was a... the animator. The animator team was big. We were yeah, at least ten people. It, I we were 30 was... people when we when when yeah, I, the, the I maximum joined. yes the maximum was around yeah. 30 people yeah. 30 i mean 30 people, people yes. for the whole team not for the animation team yeah no, no, also 30, like 30 for the, the whole oh, even, yeah the whole it's like the whole company included yeah so so i think when i said that we were all equally lost i think it's worth remembering that it were it was 30 people who were learning they, I mean, they self teaching stuff. Yeah, no, nobody knew about anything. Of course, yeah. you can say, oh, at this time, at the, but at this time there was a Toy Story out, there was Bugs Life, there were like all the big, the big, very good Pixar movies out. Yeah, so, but we were in we were we I mean, were in Sette Bagni. We were not in San Francisco, right? So of course you, you you can say that we had the reference, right? But you know what reference is this? Like this was sci-fi for us. <laughs> like, Absolutely. Yeah, well, it, it, truth be told, if you watch some of the renders of Toy Story 1, let me find I mean, which one is the which one. Which it was rendered, yeah. I, I mean, I'm not, look I'm at not this. Saying that it, <laughs> I'm not saying it aged well, okay? But uh, still, I, did we? Is that the question? Did we age well? That's the question. After I think, these experiences. I think we, we aged... Uh, oh, I animated one of these scenes when I came in. I think we... <laughs> I think we aged equally as bad, except that that Pixar movies they have a story. There you can actually well, they have, watch yeah, them and exactly. enjoy they them. Yeah, exactly. They have a story. It's a very enjoyable story, and yeah. that I, you know, even remember after years. And um, and the animation and, is come on, the animation was was fucking good. Like yeah, and, and the... I, I think I even recently I saw it was like on 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 YouTube. They it was a recording of the time of one of these mega famous animators back then and it shows how he was animating and man they didn't have a, really have a rig i mean they had the rig no, but they didn't have easy controls to pick you had to go through like a sort of a spreadsheet to pick the control like it was a complete nightmare and to think that they use that ui to do this kind of animation yeah. is, is like out of the world out of the so, world yes. and i think at the beginning they didn't, they didn't even have um ik for legs oh yes so, yes so it's just oh, you know yeah. at the very beginning that, that's that's yeah. painful yeah we did ik in here Whoa. that was that was <laughs> crazy like imagine we had quad working quadruped rigs back back uh, back then I'm, I'm actually i'm amazed at seeing this and, and we had lino. thank you lino if you thank you lino, lino on the TV. Is watching yeah and uh we had quadruped rigs in a life-size savanna in which we had to place the lions without the characters without snapping. So you had to drag the gizmo True. around the savanna to position an elephant one mile away from the center of the axis. <laughs> but, but then we have then we had a couple of uh, some new people coming in towards the end, some interns, which were really much better than um, I think they 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 were more much more than interns and one of them started coding stuff and they uh -huh, coded uh -huh. um, a grid snap in uh, in the layout because the layout didn't have a, a snap to grid mm -hmm, it was mm -hmm. really really daniel it was uh, i don't remember the surname so we we had an r d department at some point okay okay yeah. because I, I have to say like at the very at the last stretch of this movie i had to leave because um the money dried up <laughs> yeah that's what happened to all of us right simple yeah. as that and then because of course rome was very costly to live in and pretty much all my my 
uh, salary was going to to sustain myself and uh, i had to take a decision to either finish the this movie for other six months but work for free or just pack my things and go back home was that and when I... you sold your kidney and decided to finish the movie <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> that never happened and and i was very sad i had to i had to leave the production because i i just couldn't um I couldn't sustain myself and I didn't want to ask my parents to give me money to to, yeah, to work on a movie for free. It just felt felt really weird at the time. Yeah. Um, I, I had the same thing, but I took it in a different way. The, the, I think it's worth mentioning also, again, that the production that wrote the story, the production company, wasn't the same who did the CG. And the production who wrote the story yeah, of course, of course. paid the company which was making the CG and the payments weren't really coming through all the time. There were delays because in Italy, there isn't really uh, any incentive from the, ta- from the law system to pay in, on time. So at a certain point, the company had really troubles, I think, paying uh, salaries. And I found myself having uh, without money as well. So I struck a deal with the company and I said, I, I'll keep on working here, but not five days a week, only four. And because I need a showreel. That was my showreel, and and then, uh, but on the fifth, I would work elsewhere just to pay the rent. Is it to to, so, to sustain myself. Yeah, yeah to, to survive. And there's a question in the chat, and the question is about when we were working on the movie. They say, um, did we know the result would have been not that good, uh, or did we believe in this movie? <laughs> I, I would say no. I, I would say okay. Each of us knew that the story was not good. So obviously that was already a, a big, a big letdown, I guess. However, I, I think we believed in trying to do a good 3D at least, you know, back then, if we, I will say, I, I don't remember people just doing the scenes and just going to the next. I think we did this at the best of our capacities, which obviously they were not that great at the time. But uh, how I made was saying, each of us was learning and, and trying to do uh, the, the best that, that, that they could, right? So I think we believed in doing a good job for what, you know, for the cards we were dealt with, okay? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, let, let's say nobody, none of us thought that this would uh, be on, uh, because this, this was meant to go on, on the cinema in Italy, in Italy. Yeah. And none of us believed that this would last more than a week, obviously. But uh, that, you know, that's a I, bit, uh, yeah, yeah, go on. Amelia. I think uh, I thought the story was laughable. I thought it was amusing, but not because it wanted to be amusing. I thought it was amusing because of the way it was structured. I mean, the story of a vegetarian lion who falls in love with an elephant dress and spoiler alert, they have kids. <laughs> So it's, <laughs> it, it, <laughs> I thought it was, I couldn't believe, I remember I couldn't believe it. Nobody, nobody could. <laughs> and, when I, and when I asked around in the company, because I couldn't believe it, they, people were telling me, of course, of course, it's like that. You don't believe it. Here's the script. They, yes. they were really serious. You, you like are that. a bigot now and you were a bigot still back then <laughs> yeah. you, when you were young. Shame on you, Amadeo. Do you, do you think I was against the LGBT community then? <laughs> Yeah, what's going yeah. on in here so yes but i i was i didn't really look at it uh, the way you look at a whole cohesive movie i was just looking at it shot by shot and in continuity in shots and i wanted to do the best i could because i was having so much fun i didn't really think um past my shots and the sequence they were in so i, I just wanted them to look as bad as as good as bad as, as they could <laughs> as as good as they could the, that was my feeling, but Max was in the modeling department, so maybe he should also. I was in the everything so. department. <laughs> I, I was literally doing everything. I it did. was the be- best dude. I remember. Uh, I remember <laughs> B Max because he was a problem solver. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Thanks. I. I hey, I, you're I, a generalist. I was a generalist. I came in mm-hmm. and I spent most of, like the beginning uh, at at lighting, and as a lighter, I I, I remember that I created like light setups like reusable setups because i found it insane that every scene had like uh, just yeah, l- like lights fun. placed at random so that, that's what I, I i think i i i try to make some uh, uh 
sense into the, the, the pipeline back then. But, uh, and then he transitioned into becoming like a support role for anything that was needed because I was, I was a generalist. I was teaching 3D before getting this job, right? Um, so at some point I was animating. So there was a lack of animators like, or, or animation was the bottleneck back then. And I animated uh, a, a, a good bun bunch of scenes that I'm, I'm probably still proud of. I wish I could see them now, but they weren't that horrible. So um, they were in line I, with the rest of the movie. I think you were doing a good job. I remember. Thanks. It, it, yeah, it was fun. So uh, and then I was working on the render farm. I was mm, taking care of the renders. I, I came up with something that I remember that it was very, it raised some brows in the uh, uh, animator department when I proposed to, to make a list of all the animations and what they had in. So basically make a database of, of what was happening in the scenes and how we could uh, search to recycle uh, bits and pieces to speed up the, the process. And at some point we had like this large spreadsheet. I think Luigi, what, what, what was, was the name of the guy, Luigi? That, gen, that he, he joined um, towards the end, it was from Abruzzo. And we worked on this huge spreadsheet that who, whose, whose purpose ah, yes. was to, yeah, was to, yes, to yes, recycle yes, yes. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I did compositing, I did uh, uh, particle effects. I, and, and for me, that was like the best thing ever because it was, I, it was like basically I was paid to learn. Uh, uh, I was living with Amedeo back then. We were sharing this apartment, um, sharing rights to the office. It was, I mean, to me, it was probably the most fun working gig that I ever had. Um, the Apart from learning, it was like the first really social uh, I, I think I think the, the, right? the, the very good part is that the team I mean the people were good like I remember I had fun with with the, with the colleagues and yeah there was no you know nobody with weird attitudes or anything no. everybody was like you know a good guy or a girl always we still um, have I have great memories of I have, all I have, the people I, honestly, we're this is one of my my best working spots in terms of uh, of the people I think yeah, yeah, there wasn't there wasn't that kind of competition you might you might find in feature films at the end of the movie when everybody wants to move on to the next gig. You you didn't have that. It was very up close and personal in many ways. I think you know, I, that somebody I, asked, yes, yeah, so if, if working having working on a movie like this <laughs> compromise some our career, I would say fucking no. It's exactly no. the opposite. It's, it's the opposite. opposite. The opposite yeah. uh, for 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 me, it. I mean, apart from creating like the an insane amount of knowledge that allowed me to work in, like as a generalist from now from from there on, and still now I, I'm happy to put my hands in every aspect of production, and I think somehow for for Amedeo is the same. Maybe Daniele yeah. is more specialized, but well, I yeah, think... I definitely went more specialized, yes, but it's still, you know, I think I think the 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 outcome of this uh, experience uh, could be summarized in two things in, in, in respect of the question from Owl Raven. Um, one is that uh, we learned a lot. We learn, I don't think you can learn that much in a safe working environment. You need to be put like on the front line <laughs> in something that doesn't like in a, in a leaking ship and try to get it to the end. And that's what happened. And it was fun. And the rest was, and also it's the, the camaraderie and the, the people that you meet. Back then in Italy, there weren't, that was, I think it was like one of the, there were probably five companies in Italy that were developing animations. Back I, then. I would say it's even too big of a number. Less. Yeah, yeah, probably less. So uh, basically we, we are at, right now we're probably at one, or two degrees, two degrees of no of, of uh, knowledge from anybody that has ever worked in animation in Italy, and all our colleagues they moved to the uh, abroad. They're working in big studios now, small studios, fun project, uh, interesting stuff, famous stuff, and even finding a job is relatively easy for us because we know so many people and we have such, I would say, good yeah, memories and good relationships mm -hmm. that if I could say that. The, what my biggest asset is 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 how, uh, like the people I know, and uh, the the strict relationship we still keep with many of the people that working in, the, in that project. I think I'm already I'm still in contact like 
with at least um, six people that that work on that project sure, on a regular yeah. basis yeah. or like we we chat on facebook and even more like probably 10 um, say hi to pino to lino carolina pandol pandol maybe is watching maybe i hope <laughs> Um, I hope he is. Uh, Corrado. Um, who was there? Giorgio Lafratta. Alessandro oh, man, Farina. I, I, uh, Farina. I, I met Giorgio Lafratta in Vancouver two years ago. I also, also, I think Mozzago. the funny thing is mo in most of the jobs that I've been after this, I kind of bounce into somebody from that initial team. Yeah. Like, this is cra this was crazy to me that, you know, the the... Um, the, the industry, yeah, El Pintene, of course. Pinta. Um, uh, the, the, the industry, in the end, it is so small that the, the chances to bounce in each other, they're really very high. So this usually also means don't make everybody pissed, anybody pissed at you. Cause <laughs> yeah, exactly. It might backfire. <laughs> but yeah, yeah the, the, the thing is, uh, especially at the beginning, guys, the industry wasn't um, that structured, I think, yeah, at, at the yeah. beginning, 20 years ago. It was the beginning for Italy, but other nations were a bit more ahead. Yeah, well, uh, of course, yeah. UK, you yeah. say they were much more yeah. advanced. But, but the, 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 big, the big drawback I see in very organized productions is that they sit you in front of a pipeline where you may be have to press one button and the job is, um, I don't say it's done for you because it's not, but you don't really need to get your hands really dirty. You just do your part of the job and you get your hands dirty in there, but you might not even ever understand what's going on around you in a big organized production. Whereas in a production like this one, however debatable the result is, you get to know everything in terms of pipeline process. So it, it was, in fact, the contrary. I agree with, with Max, the contrary quite, quite, I would say. And in a big of... production, you don't get, a, you know, you don't have a saying in fucking nothing, except you're like your tiny box. Here we, we could say or like propose well, stuff. We, we, we could influence quite some, yes, yes. I mean, of course, besides the, uh, inside the, the, the the, the, the yeah within story, the, but, uh, but uh, we have quite some free freedom even in that sense. but that feeds back to the old discussion of if you're working for someone you're doing their bidding if you see what i mean yeah of so course. of course you have some leeway but in our case i have the feeling that the production company didn't really care about what we did in terms of cg <laughs> uh, well i mean <laughs> did they I, but i wasn't too close to them so you maybe daniele you had a you have an insight I don't know, but I mean, things were, were different back then. Like, uh, I, I, I mean, think... let, let's, sorry, let's give a perspective. This, my, this movie was made with the uh, public uh, money. So that, yeah, that was yeah. the background of it. So the only thing that was important, I, and I'm sure that from the production uh, point of view, there was also like the desire of doing something artistic or like somehow being famous because of the production, etc. But at the end of the day, this was a movie that was made with uh public financing yeah. so mm -hmm. through through the the grants of the european union oh, so union. the company itself didn't have exactly those great risks so they they, just, they got the money and their business was getting this money in the first place yeah um then the, the movie company. could be done kind of however and and this is this is a bit the sad reality <laughs> of doing 3D animation back then. I don't know how it is now in Italy because but, obviously I mean, I'm not there, so. Again, it's a, it's a relative sadness because without that company, yeah, yeah, it's true, uh, it's true. we wouldn't be here today talking about it, I think. So, and it's a, I think it's not great that the CG company had to bear, to bear the financial risk. So the, the production company was uh, the, the company moving the money around and the CG company, us, were bearing the financial risk of the, of the venture. But and it paid some... out. I mean, it paid off. If you think about how the company evolved, is now yeah, it paid off. I and, mean, and... it's the leading company in Italy and they do yeah. all sorts yeah, of they, products. They, they, they were, I, I think, acquired by Rainbow or something. I mean, acquired. Yeah. The, 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 the people that were working there, they got hired by rainbow yeah the, the core team i don't, I, I don't know exactly the yeah. mechanics but there was a the... there's a question sorry daniele there's a question and gasuto is asking uh when is the movie how old is the movie and he found 2010 in um no, 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 no. okay that's very so deceptive 2005 guys. 
it, it's the last year it was worked on. I'm very yeah. sure about it. Yeah. So the, the as but, far but as it I wasn't know, released then. Yeah, exactly. As far as I know, there is a longer story to it. In practice, I think that's the way I understand it. So I might be wrong, but I think I I, I thought I think at the time I I heard someone saying that if the money was if the money was coming even partially from the government before you were able to to get to access that money you essentially were uh, loaning that money and you would get that money back when that movie was in the cinemas but before doing so you had to pay all your providers so all the contractors so i think the production company took a while to pay the, pay all the contractors i know because i was paid Something like three years later or something like that for that. Job. Oh, shit. Yes. You were yeah. paid by another company. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was paid by another weird, company. Weird contract. Yeah. So, so in practice, the company, the, the movie was finished in 2005 and it, I think it took the production about four or five years to finalize all the contracts and everything and then go public with the movie. So do, do not measure this thing in with the meter of 2010 CG because that's not how it went. <laughs> no, but also I think that I, I, I remember I bought a DVD of Leo. I still have it in some like, you know, those auto grill, those, those service station <laughs> that you find on the highway in Italy. I think I bought it like, and it's so long ago that it was probably before 2010. Oh, really? yeah, 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 it has to be so before. Yeah. It was on DVD before then. Okay. So actually, when Amedeo, what was a few weeks ago, told me that, but he sent me the link on YouTube for Leo worst movie on Netflix. I was like, I couldn't believe that he ended up on Netflix in some form. You know? Oh, yeah. even on YouTube now, I'm streaming from the channel of someone who uploaded it. They <laughs> went, they went through the effort of uploading and and it's not even a it's a re-upload i mean i want to zoom in on this word i i'm sure it's, a, it's some it's, kind of bot that just downloads it's torrents and put them on youtube uh -huh, uh -huh. yeah wow. I, I cannot okay. believe that an actual human being to <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. do this it's a it's an actual <laughs> human being read the read the next passage i posed it so you wouldn't suffer the buffering Ooh. I mean, ah. they also went so to the, to the so lengths of ensuring a smooth user experience for us. So it, it's, I think it's <laughs> remarkable. <laughs> so he wants us to see this in 4K 60 FPS. Yeah. Oh, this <laughs> is the Danko song, guys. Yeah, it's the <laughs> Maximus. Actually, I did quite some animations on on this. Yeah. Ah, another yeah, thing this, this, is this one. This I remember this. Oh, Jesus. I, I remember. <laughs> I think another thing to notice is that there was no English dubbing back then. So the yeah, English we dubbing we hear Italian, was, yeah. wasn't there. It was in Italian. And the, I think the jokes, if there are any jokes, were a bit different. Well, this yeah. is a good practical joke. He cleans his ass on a palm and the palm dies. I think, it was a farce <laughs> I think this is like top, top com comedy. Yes. Yeah. Top com <laughs> this is the content, <laughs> the value. <laughs> but I think another thing is... Uh, this production helped everybody understand what they liked because I think I came on board thinking I want to do 3D and, and, and it was very, very generic. Ah, there's Manos. Uh, Manos uh, is asking how long did you guys work on it? Uh, that's an interesting question. I think then I, I came in that the production, when uh, the production started, Daniele, how long did I it take to animate it? I think, I don't know. I think we started in 2003 maybe end of 2002 i don't know so maybe the whole thing was two two years i would say i think i spent a year there yeah so, i spent yeah. a year there yes I, yeah. I, yeah then i would say two years including like from zero to final render like um, yeah two years uh, my, uh, with a team that grew up to well into the 25 30 people mark <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And the and the the server was a desktop machine, right? Which was on a small yeah, piece of furniture. Yes. And at a certain point, I started doing my own backups of the movie. <laughs> because, because just for safety. Just for safety, because I remember that <laughs> at a certain point, one of the hard drives failed, and the compositors had, had stuff on it, and uh, and they didn't know they didn't have the backup yet of it, so they lost a few days of work. So I, I suggested that they I, I took the electronics from an old hard drive of the same brand and they just put it on the broken one and they recovered the work. And that's when I started doing my own backups. 
because I realized that the backups wasn't really that frequent. And so I did my own backups. And I, I think in practice, I don't, I'm not even sure there, was, there were the resources to do more, more backups because at the time, hard drives were really, really small. I don't know you remember that stuff was really, really memory was, was at mm -hmm. a premium back then. So yes, but yeah, I was saying that I, when I did, when I went into animation, I was thinking I want to do 3D. I didn't really know what that was. I just wanted to do 3D. And then when I watched Ice Age, I thought I want to animate. Now I want yes. to animate. Ah, okay, that, that yeah. clicks for you. Okay. Yeah, I, I started 3D because I watched a, a making of, of the visual effects of Forrest Gump. So there was a VHS. This is a VHS. <laughs> a tape with the making of a Forrest Gump. Uh -huh. And and when I saw it, I started drawing pixel animation. And then I thought, ah, that's surely not the way they do visual effects. Pixel by pixel is not the way. And that's how I started. I wanted really to do effects in 3D in general. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then I watched the Ice Age randomly. I was walking by a cinema and there was a poster and I said, well, let's go in and have a look. And I watched the movie, and when I came out, I was another man. <laughs> <laughs> it was a changed man. Yes. I was blind, then I saw. Uh -huh. But the thing is, once I was into Digitrace and I left, I knew I wanted to do animation. I, okay, I was really, okay. I really wanted to do animation. But I was a bit, I was really a bit uh, unsure about whether I wanted to stay in a studio for long, in a company, in the same company, because okay. in a, in a, about a year and a half at that company. I found that I kind of hit the roof there or how, of how far I could go uh, with that kind of budget, especially. And so I wanted to, to grow in a different way. And I think, I mean, if you are born in a different time, a different place, you may be a, a lot luckier because I remember, I remember when, I, when I worked on Planet 51, which made a certain splash in the industry only in the industry. Look how, how uh, he, he, he slams it in your face. Right? <laughs> no, I mean, it's when, just when not, it happened not to me to work on Planet 51. No, no, it's, it's, well, it's not because of that. I only worked a few months on it anyway. But I remember that there were some people whose first job was there. So if you leave your first job with a reel coming from Planet 51, of course, you have a different kind of leverage than if you leave your first job with Leo the Lion. So that, that was fucking sure. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I mean, this happened 10 years later, almost. And it was with a totally different budget, totally different expertise. I mean, the team was international. It was, there was a very well established pipeline. I mean, they probably had more than three undos in their pipeline, right? Yeah, they certainly, we were using 3D Studio Max, which wasn't as pleasurable, I have to say, but <laughs> it, it, it had undo. That was good. <laughs> it was a good feeling to be able to undo stuff undo. without a crash or to be able to undo stuff in general. And there's, there's a, I know you're, someone, someone is addressing you, Daniele. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. I, because then I was, uh, I was friend with this other colleague and. Uh, ah, Ciputi, yes, yeah, Carlo. Yeah, and, oh, and, Frankino, and, you were live, lived with Ciputi. We didn't and know. Ca and Carlo, Carlo was his best fan. Like Carlo adored, uh, adored him, so. I, I remember that, yeah. Carlo was another person who emigrated from Milan to Rome to work on this movie. Mm -hmm. Very talented guy. I, I think he wanted Actually, to I, I No, okay, maybe somebody, that, I, I don't know exactly, but I would say most of us, that we all got on with our jobs in the end. With, I mean, with the jobs in the industry in some form, you know. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I can think of somebody that uh, just quit and now is doing, I don't know, bank accounting or <laughs> whatever, right? Like, um, I, I, I know, think that... I know, actually do know one. Okay, okay. You remember yeah. like our flatmate, Fabio. Fabio, yeah. Fabio, yes. Fabio, <laughs> Fabio I, I, I haven't heard from him in a long while. Okay. Uh, he, he got in, I think he was 40 when, when he joined, right? He, no, he had like know. an IT job. Um, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, and, and he decided to change his career and he, he, he was from Milan as well. He, we were living together and it was good. I mean, he had a lot of perseverance. He was one, he did like these, these short movies with like the Smurfs. 
on, uh, his, own. His, on his own. That was insane. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I was so bummed. And like some years later, I, 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 I spoke with him and he went back working, I think, for a, for a bank. For banks, uh, or like, yes. yeah. Okay, okay. It was mostly because when when the company closed, he was very bummed about it, and and um, I think he wanted some stability. And well, yeah, he was also much older than we were in comparison. I think. Yeah, he was yeah. I think it was forty. Yeah. I think yeah, it was more than yeah. So I think he was used to a certain standard, and and at, at the time CG in Italy wouldn't really pay that much. Oh my God! No, it was just barely <laughs> enough to pay the rent, and that, that was <laughs> so it. So I think he he went back. Yeah. And I I think for instance uh, Max, after you finished um, working at, at Digitrace, I remember that you started freelancing and you enjoyed it quite a lot. Yeah. So basically, it's not that I stopped working at Digitrace. Digitrace shut Stop down <laughs> because like money wasn't clo- like the 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 faucet was closed See, that, the yeah, company yeah. let us at home mm-hmm. like it was sad for everyone and but i i liked living in rome it was fun and we were living mm. together we were it was pretty yeah we were doing illegal stuff in that you know that the, remember the basement that we had so it was fun <laughs> um ah oh, that basement that basement <laughs> that, yeah basement, we, we that, don't, that don't humid and, and green right. basement yes um so what what happened back then is that I I got this offer to start working on some 2D graphics for Milestone. Milestone is one is one of the biggest, probably the biggest company in in, in Italy. Well, if you, uh, if you don't count uh, Ubisoft, but yeah, I think Milestone is bigger than Ubisoft okay, in okay. Milan. Yeah, yeah, I think it's far bigger, uh, especially back then. I don't think Ubisoft was even a thing. So I got I got this gig to do some uh, rotoscoping, basically, or like uh, 2D graphics for this. Uh, net te- television games really horrible and from there i was offered through fabio zino my friend he's probably watching this from like the the uh, i think he's in the hospital because he had like this toe that he showed me on on on, on whatsapp <laughs> right. like yeah I was, I'm, I'm the first aid uh there in, in the hospital so i'm following from there so anyway that he was working there uh usual connection people connect you to jobs so so be, be kind to people um, he sent over this this offer. They they gave me to uh, they gave me these these graphics to do to the graphics, and then I slowly stepped up like um, uh, computer graphics, like these these real time models of cars for um, this PlayStation Two game. And then I basically after for four or five years, I was the main um, outsourcer for the vehicles. And at some point, I had like eight, 10 people working for me on, on, on these kind of projects that, yeah, I mean, they was kindly showing, um, from my, my brutal portfolio website. And for many <laughs> years I worked on this and, and that just happened because I had to find a quick job after Digitrace, um, closed. And yeah, that's how I got into the industry, basically, uh, the video game industry, because uh, after that, I didn't go back to movies. I didn't want to hit that F8 render button anymore. It was just <laughs> too boring. Oh, yeah. So I right. stuck. Yeah, I stick to games. Yeah. So you stayed. You stayed essentially a freelancer for many, many years. I stayed a freelancer many for years. many years, except from like some small interruption. I was a. Free, I, I was a freelancer for uh, nearly ten years, give or take. Um, I worked from home like when it wasn't a thing now everybody does like <laughs> yeah that, that's a pioneer like, yeah i was a pioneer, pioneer. <laughs> yeah 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 no the, I, I was a real pioneer when i decided to move to a, a, a town in guatemala 2000 meters of height uh, they didn't even like have a decent internet and i had to put a freaking an, a satellite antenna on the rooftop because i had to work for miles on from guatemala and that's when I skyrocketed my my career because I didn't have much to do, so I was smoking weed and 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 basically doing outsourcing, uh, ten hours a day, uh, fun times. Yes, <laughs> I established myself yeah. as an artist, as a computer, gra- a video game artist back then. Yeah, in Guatemala. <laughs> in Guatemala yeah, yeah. <laughs> then I got I got a job as a um, um, lead generalist, I would say, at Lobster. Lobster is this amazing company back then we were probably 10 people now it's like five uh, 150 probably going more than that they're exploded mm-hmm. they exploded um 
And I was doing um, virtual reality simulation for students, biology students, so um, educational stuff. Um, I had I could put my hands on the first Oculus prototype, uh, play with VR when it was resurrecting from the ashes, and that was probably some eight years ago. Um, yes. yeah. Fun stuff, yeah. Then I went back freelancing, then I went back to study, then I went back to work in an office here in Budapest because I wanted to be with people. It lasted <laughs> three months before the zombie apocalypse hit. <laughs> I, I was sent back home. Back, back work from home. Yeah, but go back running where you belong. Go back, <laughs> go, go be alone at home again. Um, and yeah, but this time I was working for Cyberpunk. So I mean, I'm yeah, still working yeah. on it. So that was freaking fun. I remember, uh, I remember the, the the day that you brought me on chat on the work chat. Uh, like the, the the company worship I, I freaked out i said what the fuck is it doing? <laughs> yeah I, I i swear i don't remember who and how i got to know that you were also working on cyberpunk uh -huh. I, don't, I think i, I told I, you you told I, me okay I that's great. yes, yeah, yeah. yes yeah, because yeah, yeah. and and i know when it happened because uh last march when the pandemic started to break out me and francesca took a plane to budapest because we really wanted to go to the spa and visit you that was the two things we, we we went there for and i remember daniele was upset Thanks for saying the spa before visiting me of course day. i mean the yeah. spa is the spa in was fact, the main what, thing and then, in yeah. fact but what happened when we got there me and you and and there we went to the spa <laughs> if you remember so yeah and, and i remember that i had a conversation with daniele and Daniele was a bit upset that i was traveling during the beginning of the pandemic because you could see this happening it was like oh I, I, the I end is it, near i knew it said. all, all along <laughs> Oh, and, and I, I remember that conversation then, yeah. yes. <laughs> and then uh, when I was there, I realized you were working on Cyberpunk, Cyberpunk and I told you, look, Daniela is working on the same Did project. you just say Cyberpunk? Of course. <laughs> hey. <laughs> uh, I didn't mean it, of course. But yes, that was, uh, that was how you got to, to know that Daniela was working on the same project. And I, I think Daniele stayed for a much longer time in uh, in studios per se. It was uh, yes, like I actually I never worked uh, freelance or I I didn't follow Max's path in that sense. Um, I would say after after the, this Leo the Lion, I went into another Italian production that was like a Spanish Italian co-production. Uh, was called Don Quixote. Don Quixote. Like yeah, yeah, but with the, with the X, so it's not. It's like donkey, like uh, no, no. No, uh, yeah. Like this, 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 no, no. You, you have to write donkey like a donkey, like the. Ah, okay. The beast. Uh, and then uh, Xote X O T. There yeah. you go. There this you guy. go. There you fucking go. So oh, we worked man. on this one in Turin. But as I said, the, the director was Spanish guy. Uh, I mean, it, overall, I think it's, it's definitely better than Leo. However, it's still well, in much that better, kind of range. Yeah. It's much better, for sure. <laughs> it has I mean, shadows. The, <laughs> it has the shadows. Rainbow. The characters have a design. Yeah, yeah. So it was it was definitely much better, you know. Um, so I did this production here, but okay, in this case, uh, as animator, because when I was uh, on Leo, I was I was doing animation, but as as we said already, I was also doing many other things because there was a lot to do. So this this was the first time I just did animation and as a, uh, you know, a just, just as animator, animator to, uh, with my scenes assigned and just do this and, and, and go home. So I, I think it was a good experience. Um, after this, I joined Amedeo in M Munich, uh, Ooh, in, Ger in Germany, yes. if you remember. That was a very quick job, but I also, <laughs> yes. I, I like it. I was six months or seven, something like that. And... On Lissi und der Bilder Kaiser. <laughs> <laughs> I, think I don't know. This, this also, I think, was a decent uh, cartoon at the time. So This cartoon was, was even fun at times, in my opinion. It, was, it right? had nice scenes. It had also some kick-ass animators, like the one animator yeah. uh, ended up at Weta Digital after this, or, you know, like Daniel Yeah, Zettel. there was um, Thomas so, Ruth, who ended yeah, up yeah, at yeah. DreamWorks. Uh, so, you know, it was some some good stuff, I would say. Um, 
However, this was the end of my career in movies. <laughs> no, because after after this, I actually I really don't know what clicked in me, but I said, "Fuck this shit! I want to work in video games." Um, and the, the the main reason of saying "fuck this shit" it was not because I didn't like the 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 work. It was because the contracts were all very short. Like it was always a year. A year was like tops. Okay. Uh, it was more like, you know, six months, uh, four months. Uh, it was always, um, and changing job usually means changing city or country. <laughs> so. uh, yeah, it's funny that you mention it because yeah. one of the things that, that I didn't really like were, were, was long contracts. I really enjoyed movies because yeah, okay, the, end, okay. the end was definite. They told you in one year we're done and you go. And I was like, yes. And I didn't have to go through the, the process of saying, guys, I want to leave. It was just, it was peaceful that I would leave. In fact, no, okay. when I... Yeah, it's true, it's true. Um, but, but I don't know, back then, uh, you know, at the, at the end of this movie, I think I was, I don't know, 28, something like that. I don't remember, but I, I kind of wanted a bit of stability, meaning to know that I'm going to be in a place for a while at least. And then I said, ah, oh, maybe I should look into gaming industry because gaming projects, usually they last longer. I mean, it doesn't mean that I have to stick with one company forever, which is impossible anyway. <laughs> uh, well, you know, all the mad, all kind of shits happen, you know, and you can't really say this is, this is the last year. But, you know, you can stay for more years, for sure. You stayed at Crytek forever. How long Seven did you stay? Seven years. Well, there was, there was one of the cases where I said, okay, fuck it, this is it. And then it wasn't because, <laughs> uh, because uh, when I left, uh, it was again for some, a bit of economic crisis at the time and things that uh, I think now are sorted out because the company is still, you know, doing pretty good. But, uh, you know, we had a period that it wasn't exactly super good and then pushed me to look, uh, look to the next uh, gig in that sense. So what you're um, looking for is the Japanese way of like getting into a Zaibatsu uh, and I think a, uh, the uh, mega corporation, the mega corporation, and like staying yeah. there until the end of your days, and possibly pass it over to your kids. I don't know. I don't know because it's uh, it's, it's hard to say. Like. Uh, for for me, it's important to have a bit of stability, knowing that I'm gonna be in a place for for at least a, a span of five six years. Because as um, I don't know, I did the life of changing, you know, just going around with the luggage and the toothbrush in it, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> and um, the laptop. Yeah, and but those days are over, and and for a good reason. Um, do you have a melancholic yeah. French uh, uh, music, Amadeo, to play? Ah, yeah. Yeah. Some harmonica. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So no, I don't know. It's like, and I have to say, at the time, I didn't really know what I was getting into. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I I didn't know what I was getting into with games, but uh, it turned out that I liked it. I mean, I always liked to games as a player i always play things but um uh you know one thing is playing one thing is actually making the dumb game so uh, uh, but uh, I, I i didn't regret the choice and actually i grew to like it uh, and uh, with the years and to really appreciate uh, you know the difference of being game animator uh, opposed to like a series or movie animator in that sense you know? I mean, I know these days, uh, like, like a lot of people that work in movies, they, I, I think they kind of orbit around London and at least in Europe, you know, because you can really go between one gig and the next, right, Amedeo? I mean, you did this live yeah. for a bit, so. London, London has the advantage that there, there is in practice a lot of work going around. There were a lot of companies. Um, I don't know, but... When I came to London, I think I came to London for other reasons. I wanted to study acting and I wanted to do parkour and I wanted to go to learn to glide, to fly just, a glider. Just London, exactly. There were, this is a London, speciality. <laughs> this, yeah, because in, in the UK, you could fly a glider for very cheap money if compared to Italy, for instance. Okay. 
And, no, uh, Medeo, you're doing spoiler, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. <laughs> no, oh, oh, sorry. Wait, it's, it's in the showroom. Oh. It's in the showroom. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. It's in the showroom. Sorry, Daniele, I was not supposed. But the, uh, let's change the subject. What, what, what there was. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know there were spoilers, guys. You, you should have told me. The, there okay. was a question on on the chat from Mr. Jibba, whose identity could be interesting. And he said, how much pain did cyberpunk provoke in you guys? I can't talk because I'm, I'm, I am an outsider. Okay, what, what, what kind of pain? Sorry, I, I only see the Twitch shot here. So uh, well, uh, how I can't painful start. was it? Uh, uh, absolutely uh, none, I would say. For, for Personally, for me, because I, I haven't worked on it as many years as Daniele did. And my, my uh, contribution to it is, is uh, I'd say, it was definitely painless plus i was working on a uh, on, on an outsourcing company the pain is just like seeing the, the reviews for me that that was the only pain i don't think it was deserved uh, given the if, if people had known how much effort was put into that they would not have complained that much as the whiny bitches they are sorry you can well, okay <laughs> i mean i don't know maybe maybe you're you're a bit too harsh on the other side i think I mean, so I, I still think that that you know people, especially if we sell the game on PS4, it has to work on PS4, right? So uh, it has like a lot of had, had big big issues on that, and I mean there isn't much to do to 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 say or comment now. It was that wasn't already said uh, in the previous months. Uh, the companies behind it, uh, the fixes uh, are being worked. Uh, I think, I think. Like as a, my point of view, uh, there was maybe too much trust that things would work on on like uh, old generation. And you know, if I see the comparison with other big companies like like Rockstar that they do, you know, GTA or, or Red Dead Redemption, they develop the game specifically for console first, and then even one year, one year and a half later, they 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 bring it on PC. And I would say, I I think we should have done maybe a similar thing. Um, this would have solved so many headaches. Um, but I, I obviously, this is only my suggestion. <laughs> and and I, I don't- but This is often the destiny of those who dare. And in fact, they dare a lot. And- No, of course, they, they I think it was a daring project. I, I think the game is good for what it is. It's just that uh, the, the launch was marred by, by the, the bugs, especially on on console. And yeah, I don't know, it is also a bit of the way social internet is today, that, you know, one guy throws a stone and then all the stones come. Yeah, of course, <laughs> it's easy to, to kick somebody that is already on the ground. It is very yeah. easy. So yeah, I think it was a bit of bad combination of things. And, but also uh, it's, it's true that in general, the biggest the projects, the project, the, the hardest it is to make everything work together, because yeah, 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 I mean, yeah. you're talking about a massive project. I think you hardly know who does what at a certain point. It's even in visual effects is the same. You, I think the size of the production doesn't necessarily relate to the result very often. Yeah. You, the, you the, feel... the, the, the team grew also quick, quite fast compared to the numbers they had for 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 The Witcher and. Um, I have to say, you know, there is a, a point of a critical mass where adding more people is not going to solve more problems, but it's going to add more problems, you know. Um, mm. So, yeah. I had the same experience on this beautiful mu movie, <laughs> let me find it, where John Carter, where the team was at a certain point immense and the company, Double Negative Visual Effects, uh, used to be at the top of their game at the time. I don't know where they are now in terms of uh, ladder. And uh, I think they went from 250 people to 1,000 in something like one or two years. Crazy. And at a certain point, I think it was hard even for who was managing this thing to know what was going on. I mean, there's so, there are so many assets, so many people. Uh, the pipeline maybe comes from previous productions where the team was much smaller. And despite all the talent, I think it's very difficult at a, cert at a certain point to manage. I think mm -hmm. management is really one of the key problematic areas of these productions that they're too big to, to be managed unless 
I don't know how you could even solve this this problem. I think there's this critical mass factor that you were mentioning, Daniele, which makes a lot of sense. Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah, production yeah, I mean, have become massive today. I mean, it, it, it's already like it probably sounds like a, a, a something that has been said all, over and over. But managing a, a, a project with like six, seven hundred people—it's insane. It is. It is insane, especially well. I, now, of course, I never work on movies uh, like this, so there are many facets, of course. But on, on a game, I would. You know, there is more things that can go wrong, in my opinion. <laughs> and, <laughs> well, because you have the interactivity. Yeah, the, there are so many aspects, games, right? And, and yeah, like, and actually, it wasn't um, the the cats movie. Sorry, that it was. Uh, oh yeah, they year. got updates. They, they, they got the update right for the movie itself, which is crazy to me when, when I read about it. Are you this serious? I didn't know that. You mean yeah. the cats? They, they... They, they gave the the master cop. I mean the copies of the movie around, and then there were some scenes they had problems, and then they updated the movie, and and I say, oh my god, are they doing like games now? We do like the day zero patch or something. <laughs> they did. Like some people saw at the theater they on the there. opening. For, I don't know why somebody would go and see cats, but anyway, they 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 <laughs> saw uh, a version of the movie that where some scenes were actually missing bits of of CGI. That's insane. Oh, uh, seriously? Yeah, it is insane. It is it's insane. insane. Yeah. So oh, uh, you did, but you did oh, because you're a furry. We all know, <laughs> Frankino. We all know the reason <laughs> that like you, you're coming oh, wait, out so... on this chat. We are very happy for you. It's a time where like. Any kind of sexuality, it absolutely celebrates it. And we <laughs> celebrate you for coming out as a furry. Uh, so if you want you to be grooming. able to come here and speak about your addiction to fur and like how you turn it into a profession, you're more welcome to do in so fact, you're in welcome. the next epi episodes. Yes. Because I, I imagine, Gasuto, that you have done the, the, the furring on these cats, right? <laughs> You've done the grooming furry. on this stuff. Mm -hmm. I would imagine that there's there were so there yeah i mean but back there. on the topic uh, triple a games became so massive and big and now you know the production of one from scratch can take five years minimum you know and uh, i think that the numbers are just going up and it is a real issue to to manage i wonder also myself if the industry is gonna not, not, not many companies in the industry can sustain this uh, this amount of uh, uh, of people on a project and managing yeah. all these people. And For, I mean, how can you even guarantee that they will be there in one one year time? I mean, think yeah. of yeah. the pandemic. Think of many things that can happen, and now you have a thousand paychecks to pay every month. And that's something that I try to, when I teach, I often try to, especially in, on team project, I team projects, I try to tell my students that this meeting we are having of, I don't know, 10 people, 20 people mm -hmm. has a cost for the company, for instance. So everything that involves, I don't know, a certain amount of people is the cost of the daily rate of one person yeah. multiplied yes. by the same, yeah. by the people. And that's how budgets explode usually. I mean, it takes there's something very little to add, I don't know, one month of production. And to people outside, uh, one month is nothing, right? Someone on Reddit says, well, one month, what is it? 30 days for me. But if you are a company of 1,000 people, that's 30,000 <laughs> daily rates. It's 1,000 months of work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's 1,000 months of work. It's not little. It's, it's very difficult to manage that kind of magnitude of project. Mm -hmm. Plus, yeah. the bigger you become, the more people you need to manage the overhead. Like I was talking with a guy today on, 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 on the project. He was the Jira, the Jira, the Jira or Jira uh, um, manager. So you need a person that actually is full time job is to handle the yeah. yes. platform, only the Jira, like the, the yeah, we, we have a Jira tool program. I mean, <laughs> yes, exactly. Like. He, that that's that starts happening when you when you the bigger you become the the and there's this mathem mathematical rule i don't remember the name but some economists came out with it and like it's like six percent of the employees do 90 percent of the job or something like that yeah so and and well i didn't know that one but uh, yeah, yeah it's, called, it's called it's called this is I, a bit I of a scary it, proposition i, I learned it uh, recently it's called presenteism daniele in practice they made an evaluation and they found out that 
absenteeism, that is people not showing up for work, causes much less damage to a company than presenteeism, which is people showing up and not doing anything. Not doing the doing actual work. Okay. So, okay. and one of the issues in very big productions is that sometimes people are hired and their supervisor doesn't even know why they were hired. It, it can happen. So they, they just need numbers because they, they estimated okay. they would be that neat. And then now you have people who you don't know how productive they are. So, and, 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 and maybe you don't know what's, what's going on in there. So mm -hmm. I think there's also that aspect. I, in, I didn't really, I think I met for most of the time, I, I always had the feeling that people around me were working just as hard as I was. But if, I mean, the stats seems to, seem to suggest there is this problem, so. Okay, okay. Um, I don't know, in my personal experience in, in the past jobs or the current, uh, I would have a hard time seeing this, you know, that you say, but uh, I don't know, it's stats are stats, I guess. <laughs> it's stats. You, you have to, I think, it's also true that probably they don't relate specifically to the industry of CG. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's something a bit more generic, I think. There's also yeah. th think think about the fact that sometimes, like, for for fixing a bug that maybe maybe takes like t twenty minutes to fix, on top of that you need like QA testers, some people that files the bug, somebody that re uh, reads reads the bug is, email. So I'm I'm not joking when when I say that like to fix a twenty minutes bug, maybe there's like three hours on top of that. To create it, it is always it is always, ah yes yeah. yes exactly i mean yeah. like, uh, it happened even on movies i remember sometimes you had a little problem that if i could fix it myself i would just click on it move the thing five units to the left sorted no but i have to go to the supervisor he has to go to the other supervisor the other supervisor has to go down to their department and tell the artist and by the time you you get the solution one week has passed for something that really takes one, five minutes to, to fix. And that's another organizational issue. But again, it's very difficult to, to decide how to sort it because if you give people the freedom to move that thing by five units, they may break the game, it's right? It's gonna be a disaster, <laughs> yeah. You, you so, need the rule in place. Uh, there is just no easy way to do it. As I said, the, the more people you add on a project, the, the sluggier, slug, more sluggish it will become. And uh, like the, I don't think there is a solution. Like the, the only thing is do smaller games. <laughs> yeah, in fact, uh, if you think of it, speaking of which, mm. a lot of smaller games are now happening, and even yes. even Max I, is I, trying to I set something up. I honestly think there is a bit of a, a trend inversion in in the the, the last years where um, you needed huge companies to do huge games, but you can st still do a big game with much less people in comparison and especially with the introduction of free engines like unreal unity mm, i mean yes. they're out since few, a few years already but um they're like the best uh, friend of uh, indie developers and and now with a team of 50 people you can do much much more than than just five years ago proportionally a team of 50 people yes, has yeah. better chances of of becoming of creating a, yes, a profitable yes. game than a, a team of 500 that's why um, for sure these are gigantic risks um, yes and, and amadeo is shamelessly uh, promoting my um, game the clock and this is actually uh, i, I will use it to to explain a good point so um i mean if you can play it so basically this game uh was my final project i took a year off and i went to study game design at vancouver film school at the end of the year together with five other people um, uh, we created this game in less than three months um, it's fun I, I suggest you 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 play it these are amazing animation by made by sage baker by the way amedeo she is younger than uh than you were when you started working on 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 yeah like i'm sorry i i I'm sorry yeah i had to say <laughs> I that yeah to deal she, with she, that. she was like 19 she was probably 20 when when she did the i'm animation. sorry you have been she, replaced she is one year one year younger i think yeah yeah, yeah I, I left to deal with that <laughs> yeah you gotta deal with that i go and uh, cry don't wait for me yeah, Bragor, yes. Hey, Nico. Yeah, the chicken Nico is, is on Twitch. He's the programmer that made this mm -hmm. uh, uh, 
game possible. So we did this in less than three months, five people plus the, the sound engineers. But uh, if you think about it, it was yeah, probably like 20 minutes gameplay um, and was done with like free tools and very, very, very few time, a small time. If you think of how much, and this won the Unity Award for best indie, uh, best game stu students game in 2020, 19, 19, I think at this point. Um, so if you proportionally think like what what you can do with such a small team and what you can do with like a team that is like uh, six people against 600, a hundred times bigger, it's not proportional. The bigger no, it, it becomes, really the, isn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's definitely not proportional. Like uh, um, so. It's, it's not a linear proportion. Absolutely yes. not. The bigger the you, the team becomes, the sluggier it becomes. Um, so, and, and yes, Nico, uh, since you're here, uh, I think I will announce to the world that that's I am I left my job already, and it's not a mystery. I won't be working on Cyberpunk um, in in June because. I decided to start with Mr. Bragor, that is Nico here in the chat, uh, and our dear friend Maruf. We are starting a game company. So we decided to give it a try. Uh, we, we did this many times, like not as a company, but like as, as a group or like a small project. Yeah, we right. went together on. Yes, we, we, that's, that's a story for other For another, uh, for call, another yes. episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Right. I think right now, in, indeed, with Unreal around, even I managed to slam together a couple of game mechanics in Unreal, and I'm not a programmer, so I think finally you can do a lot of stuff. I tried Unity as well. I, I, I tried scripting in Unity, but I think Unreal makes made it a lot easier for me uh, because I don't enjoy scripting that much. I can do it to save my life. <laughs> There's a conversation between Max and... <laughs> Gasuto, you want to be to be a runner for grooming <laughs> in games? <laughs> well, now you are real. You can groom. <laughs> we might need hair for the next project. Who knows? We might do a hair-based game. Hair scam. Okay. I would. I, I think we are almost up uh, in terms of time. And I wanted to make a, another point before we we left. Uh, one one of the things that was really really good for me working in, on the very first movie on Leo the Lion was that I was finally exposed to people which, who came from different places of Italy and I could finally meet people who had a different background than mine. Because coming from a small village, I really didn't know much at all. I mean, even less than I know now. And I think it's in that company with those people that I got introduced to Monty Python, for instance. You remember, <laughs> do you remember Life of Brian, Max? Oh, of course, we had a the very a thriving exchange of cultural exchange during those years. Yes, I mean, I didn't really know. I didn't even know these movies existed when I uh, when I went. Well, I mean, it was know. different times. I'm pretty sure, like uh, kids of 20 years old today, they they are much more exposed than they're used to. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you you have the now you can you you see me. I mean, I I we watched ten twenty clips t tonight, but at the time it would take me one night to download one, so it is it is quite a difference. And I I remember Max always was into Japanese culture, so I remember Max introduced me to Takeshi Miike. Of oh course. yes! Oh my God, that, this is right. such a nasty director. Yes. Such a nasty director. I don't, I don't know if it's safe for work. Or, no, no, or, it isn't. No, no. Probably not. I'm not right? going to click anywhere. This is <laughs> fucking disturbing, yes. But I mean, it's, it, it, it's again, it's something I didn't know you could make. And I think that was the whole point. I think you, it's good for you to be confronted with something you didn't know could be made or could exist. I mean, still today to write the, 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 the title of the movie with sperm, on grass, it's still considered edgy. So, yeah, <laughs> some st some things are not still, <laughs> are still mainstream. A, let's say a but, nerd. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> thank you, thank you. It was it was a lot of fun, and and still today, I I, I rewatch sometimes. I rewatch in the Infernal Affairs trilogy, oh. which I mean, the Infernal Affairs trilogy is a great movie. In fact. 
In fact, when I when The Departed came out with um, the remake came out with DiCaprio, I was I watched it and I was like, "What's this thing?" And yeah. there was there was almost nothing to it of the of, of course the the main oh I don't have a blocker on on oh, here so mm -hmm. so well I hope you didn't watch the the remake of Old Boy no I didn't then, yeah I couldn't do that either but we yeah we we were watching like quite uh, um, let's say uh, um, avant garde true stuff I, I, back I, then back then I watched a lot a lot of Japanese movies and then I I didn't follow up with, with um... With, it's, with the topic, it was yeah. for me it was a blast it was really a blast even for that reason i mean we would living together with max we would exchange movies we would watch movies together in a time when you netflix wasn't there you couldn't really i mean you really had to do some research to watch a movie without going to the cinema so i think that also was really good it taught us to research stuff which nowadays is a bit different in terms of a process in many ways. Because maybe, the, maybe. However, I mean, I still content. do it today because the, the stuff on Netflix kind of sucks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I found out there are whole if videos I want, on YouTube. If you want to watch this. something nice, you, you still have to do your homework, I would say. Yeah, you definitely have. In fact, one of the problems I have right now is that I work quite a lot because I'm teaching in two schools, I'm working on a video game, and I don't have time to search for stuff I want to watch. So sometimes I just don't watch anything because I'm sure. just, I don't have the time to research that, that kind of stuff, but I would like to, because it contributes to, to my well being in a way, watching something I'm interested in really improves my mood in general. So I think, um, I think maybe we can wrap it up here and we, we will, we will be back. I suppose I, I, I enjoyed it. So I think we will be back. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I had the, uh, I, so I don't know. We, we did we say how this started? Yeah, we yes we did. Like uh, when when Amadeo uh, said, okay, let's set it up and go on Twitch. I was afraid that this would have become like something much more formal, and that we, uh -huh, uh -huh. we would have stay stop it saying fuck shit, dick ass, and, and all those things <laughs> uh, that that uh, yeah that, that happen in the conversation. But it's totally informal, unorganized, uh, and it's still fun. So I would definitely. Uh, make it a um, weekly possible uh, event. I, would, I would like to make it weekly yes and yeah. I think we can call in uh, other people as well every now and then or maybe weekly if we find them sure because sure. I think it's a good idea to even it you discover things even talking back about this stuff I mean I re remember in the first day of work <laughs> yeah yeah this is far more uh, wide than just talking about the job as a lot yeah. of cultural and, and 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 yeah and fun aspect of it oh we we haven't told about this the chair oh yeah no we have to oh, say that no, okay. we, have to, we have to okay you save it uh, for last can, can i can i can please, i please please first i show uh, thanks pino for for like uh getting the memories back to the to the real thing so basically this happened okay so imagine this is my first day at work at leo the lion oh shit. was uh, it your first day really it was my first day <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah it was my first real day i think i had a, like it, it was, i think it was my first day yes so I'm, I'm, I'm sitting down trying to figure out shit on, on the computer and like the, there's this large room. We were all working on the same big room, 30 people, uh, around 30 people back then. And it was, uh, I think it was review day and the director that was coming from the, the production outside. So it was not part of the, it was the, not part of the company. It was not the, part of the company. So basically company. we were, we, we, we had been outsourced with the task of creating the movie. So the director, so, so somebody from outside uh, was in checking animation shots, uh, as far as I know. And um, I, I'm, I'm sure that it had something to do with uh, unplanned changes on the movie. Mm -hmm, um yes. that were like it was probably too late to 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 do to or like it would have required yeah. like mm -hmm. imagine like asking somebody that has probably already been working more than expected or more than that they were paid to on an, like a very uncertain and economically and organizationally wise <laughs> situation so the director probably asked 
to to our boss to like uh, reshoot some stuff and that escalated and probably the boss say like no this is we really cannot do out it out of budget yeah, yeah totally out of budget and it was all in the open and the thing like escalated very quickly up to the point that the the the, the guy the the the, the director he picked it up a chair and and try to throw it after to, to, to the, yeah, our well, like boss, a full the throw God. there yeah, was yeah, not yeah. a thing done done in like <laughs> mimicking it was an actual throw yeah <laughs> it was actually like like going raging picking up a chair and throwing it to uh, uh, francesco our boss and like uh, i remember pino our dear friend pino like a very sturdy muscular the guy fast. jumped yeah, yeah. I, think, I think he blocked the dude yeah, yeah. yeah he blocked the dude blocked the chair and like stuff happened and the, as usual the, the the guy walks away goes into the top corridor and then like i'm fine i'm fine and then starts running back to meet <laughs> the guy again and then um eventually he he, he walked it back he left saying uh and good weekend everyone just like ah, yes, nothing yes. Has happened. Then, then we had this as a meme for for the rest of the production yes exactly and i i remember i said I'm going to work for this place. Like this, <laughs> this is fucking, fucking amazing. <laughs> this is this is very it's like the most garage. You see, you see yeah. the passion, you see the, the, the <laughs> Yes, I nearly saw the blood. Yeah. It was uh, it, it was the it was the first day of the intern and there were some interns on the first day. True, true, true. And um after this scene happened, the chair the chair was almost thrown and Pandolf who is enormous just stopped the director as well. And I remember that the director was the director was escorted <laughs> out and Francesco, the owner of the company, turned to the interns who were looking <laughs> they were looking at this <laughs> thing <laughs> and, and and he said, Guys, it doesn't happen every day, okay? It's, it's not, not like day. that every, every day. day. <laughs> yeah. I can't imagine the emotional state that he was into. Like if you if like think about that like even back then i probably didn't have like a very expanded uh, uh, empathy and i still don't have now but to think about mm -hmm. how it, it would have felt in that situation like the adrenaline and the, but for yeah. us it was like the 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 i think it was the dawn of the myth of that of that company for me maybe maybe yes. yeah <laughs> I, I forgot it was uh, your first day but yeah yeah and i say yeah that's that's how I, I, I would say okay that's that's where i'm gonna work uh, i never really had that that kind of um heat in a production um, after that i mean i had it in a one small company i worked with i had a similar situation without chairs Okay. And uh, but uh, that's another thing that. No, I but really... you work in in England. Everybody's like, like quiet, and and I, fact, I can't see. No, I can't fact, see an Englishman. You need an Italian production to do things like this. <laughs> no, I was I was in another country, in fact, and I I sat. But that's a, for another day, I think. I sat next to a director who would shout at me regularly, I mean, as in shout at you as you work. Mm -hmm. okay. It was really an interesting experience. <laughs> exactly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but another day, mm -hmm. another day, mm -hmm. not today. Yeah, you first need to consult with your lawyer to be yeah. See, yeah, exactly. To yes. <laughs> yeah, I will first seek legal counsel, <laughs> and then <laughs> if enough fears have passed, you cannot be put in jail if you guys disappeared, right? right. Yeah, check it thoroughly. It depends so, on the country yes. where the crime happened. I, I think one of the I think in fact in Britain I kind of missed that kind of heat. I, mm -hmm. I enjoyed that. I think there was another side to the job uh, in, in that company in Italy uh -huh, that uh -huh. it, you can't find um, it, it very true. often. It's true. Yeah. But again, uh, I think it also becomes at a certain point a bit of a limit of the company itself because you need a relaxed environment. If you have to deal between an external production and an internal production, you have to be finding a compromise and i think even the director wasn't in a good position having to be the negotiator between two two companies i don't think it's a role for a director i think you would need a producer there to come in and discuss yeah, i mean and many things were wrong so yeah. we never knew the the other side of the of, yeah. of the of the the the, the medal um of the coin how do you say yeah the other the flip side of the coin maybe the flip side maybe. of the coin we never got to know that so no. for us they and were plus. like the 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 evil uh, uh puppet masters from, from yeah for Paul, us. right <laughs> yeah. those from the outside <laughs> yeah it was just that so i think i will call it a night uh we'll call it a night guys um 
thank you very much, Daniele and, and Max, to undergo this experiment. <laughs> and uh, it was a lot of fun. Thanks, Let's man. Again. Hey, thanks for organizing. Yes, the really. Thing. And and uh, thank you, everybody who joined us and who asked questions. It was a lot of fun for me. And I wasn't. I thought I would have been a lot more stressed. I was expecting Twitch to fall or my computer to fall, but instead it went smoothly. So I'm I'm going to organize another mm -hmm. one soon. So keep an eye on on YouTube or Instagram or twi Twitter or LinkedIn to find out more. And I'll probably see you guys next week. Sometime. Yeah. Let's figure sure. it out. See you next yeah, week. No Bye. Have a yeah. good night. Bye, guys.